You're listening to another episode of the Philly Sports Jabronis. Tonight's podcast is being recorded live at Nippers Bar and Pizza on Main Street in Jeffersonville, Pennsylvania. And now, on with the show. Philly Sports Jabronis, I'm Joe Darrick, Mike Greger, Rob Sr., and Carlo Slade. Hello, ladies. We're live at Nippers for this football Thursday. Uh, week five of the NFL season, and we got a lot to get into tonight. We're going to talk about uh, potentially uh, season alt, alt, uh, that's a word I want to get out of already, <laughs> altering, there you are, season, season altering win potentially for the Philadelphia Eagles last week, um, heading into that into that game, a little nervousness um, for Eagles fans, I'm sure, um, but a uh, huge win, kind of feels like the season is taking a little bit of a different spin now, especially with the uh, with the Jets on tap for this week, potential for this team to go on a roll, and we're going to get into that. We'll, of course, get into our traditional hijinks of games not to bet and and uh, Survivor Football. Manifesto took a little bit of a black eye over the uh, past weekend. We'll get in. We'll get into that. Uh, we're also going to we're also going to somewhat veer a little off course. I mean, this involves football, but um, not just football. The uh, the state of California recently had an act passed that is going to let uh, college athletes potentially make some money in the coming years. And we'll get into that and how that's potentially going to affect the college football landscape and beyond. Some really, um, some really interesting things I think are going to come out of this, at least for conversation purposes. Hey, we have at least three years to kind of talk about it before before reality becomes reality. But going to get into that. Um, so yeah, this is the first week that we've had at least uh, four of us here, and um, something that we all, the four of us, wanted to kind of wait until the four of us could get together before we talked about this during a podcast was uh, a loss that, uh, you know, we talked about we talk about wins and losses all the time in this podcast, but we um, we had a loss in, in what is real life over, over the uh, spring. For those who listen to us every week, you haven't heard Jamie Toman's voice yet uh, on the podcast this season. We, we lost him after a rather brief illness, and... Um, it's something that we that we've all struggled to kind of uh, acknowledge and live with and and, and talk about. Um, hence the reason to not jump up and talk about it all on social media or talk about it all on our podcast to date. Um, but one thing I just want to you know say about Jamie, um, other than we'll miss him, is that you know I met Jamie almost by accident. You know at a, at a happy hour, maybe maybe ten years ago. Um, he had just started dating a friend. A friend, um, I think a friend of basically everyone at the table. Mike, Mike, you may not know Jess, but anyhow. Um, and we were, I was at a happy hour, sort of, I think a St. Patty's Day thing that I wasn't necessarily expected to go to. And then I ended up being able to go, and and I met him there. And uh, the the one thing I remember is just laughing a lot, right? Just having just having met Jamie and just talking. Yeah, you know, we hit it off about the Eagles or, you know, at, at that point, maybe the start of Philly season or w- whatever, uh, approaching, start of baseball season approaching, but we just, we laughed a lot, and I kind of, you know, with Jamie, I didn't, before the podcast, I never really got to hang out with him as much as I wanted to, like, this was, a, this was like how I thought of Jamie before we got together every week for our podcast, he was always someone who I just felt like I I wanted to have more time to hang out with. I would say after that, you know, him just continued to date and eventually got married. Um, it was usually like a three or four month clip would seem like it would go by, and you know, I would see him at a, you know, at a at a mutual friend's party or happy hour or something like that. And I just always knew that it was going to be a good time because he just had a great sense of humor. Um, and uh, one other thing I'll share is that about five years ago, related to that sense of humor. Uh, an annual Halloween party in Conshohocken um, that I don't get to go to anymore since becoming a dad. Um, but one year he he showed up uh, in a Ron Burgundy costume and basically went all the full full nine had the stash had had the hair had the had the had the threads and was just just knocked it out of the park and it was one of the funnest and funniest nights um, that I can remember and. Those are kind of the things that just Jamie as a you know 
in general that, that that I think about a lot. You know, on top of obviously diehard Eagles fan. Um, we know he was probably the strongest supporter of the process. Carlos said a very close number two, I would say. Or I don't know. You and you, Mike's Mike's pretty close supported as close as as you guys as well. But um, but yeah, that's um that's something I just wanted to share um and you know let our listeners know that that they ha- you know the reason that they haven't heard him yet is because you know we're de- we're dealing with the, with that loss and uh, yeah, it's Jamie. We'll miss you and want to acknowledge it. And, um, you know, feel like we absolutely are going to cut to a moment of silence here for him and uh, just do some dead air. If uh, if you don't hear us for about 60 seconds, it's not because we had some occurring internet problems. Let's uh, let's give Jamie a moment of silence here and uh, we'll miss you, bud. Go Birds. All right, we're back. So the Eagles actually did win last week. And Must win. in pretty entertaining fashion. Well, I guess it depends, depending on what your, your uh, perception is of entertaining. But let, let's, so let me just throw it out to you guys here from, from the standpoint of one of the big takeaways conversation-wise from that game. Um, if we go away from the X's and O's for a little while, is the, the replay. The replay and uh, what is and was not pass interference. And just... Walking away in the in the moment, and as we sit here now, almost a week late, well, a week later, um, what were your guys' impressions on the officiating impact of the game versus just how the two teams came out and performed? I hate to eliminate myself from this one because full disclosure, I did not watch one second in that game. Okay, um, I was I was out and about doing other things. So okay. I can only go by what I saw as far as uh, scoreboard watching and just stats in general. Um, so as far as the pass interference goes, I have nothing to offer. Okay, I'll try to go in his place as neutral as possible. Sure. Because I guess I finished second in terms of vested interest in who wins the game. Right. And I didn't have a bet on it either way, so I can't even count myself on that. Um <laughs> I don't think either team benefited or was jobbed by the calls. What I will say is this. When you make a new rule in the league based solely on one play, these are the things you get into. In the same game, or no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. In the Lions game, you had a player's helmet literally removed from his head Mm -hmm. on a face mask call. That's not reviewable, despite the fact that anyone, including the Lions fans with whom I was watching the game, could see that penalty. But something like pass interference, where Carlos' idea of pass interference is probably different than Joe's, is different than mine, is different than Mike's. Yeah, true. Um, It's one of the most subjective penalty calls in the league, and it's the only one that's reviewable. What happened last year in the New Orleans game, the championship game, was unfortunate. But to me, this is, I don't want to say an overreaction, but the wrong reaction. Okay. Well, they're just, and they're just testing it out for the season, right? So I feel like they're, they're, they probably just did that to appease the Saints. And they're probably going to go back and get rid of it next year. Yeah. That's kind of my opinion on the thing. But, it is, yeah, it's, it's been controversial. It's been everything we thought it was going to be. It's, it's slowing the games down a little bit. And, uh, you know, I heard Merrill Reese talking. He, he was livid about how much it's changing the game, not for the better. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't like it. <laughs> but, but like Rob said, I don't think that any call in that in Thursday night's game d- determined the outcome or, or ruined anything that, that wouldn't have happened. No, I think, yeah, and to that point, you know, the, just the whole, the whole presence of the refs basically wanting to, it seems like, you know, wanting to make what felt like the, the safe call on the field for, for a replay to do its job. Um, 
after the fact, kind of that kind of felt like a like a real thing um, in the moment, and I feel like it was justified each you know handful of times that that that, that seemed to be the way that things were playing out on, on the field. Um, uh, and, and, you know, in particular the the brief defensive return for a touchdown. You know, it seemed pretty evident that, uh, and again, you know, I think it is a good point to, to, to point out that everyone's interpretation is, is different, right? Especially in the moment. Um, it's like, you know, that whole thing if, you know, you pass it down the lever on a, you know, someone gets on a school bus and says, oh, you know, Joni loves Chachi, pass it down. By the time you get down to the back of the bus, it's, you know, Fred like Steve. You know, so um, it's, you know, everyone's Which interpretation okay of what too. they hear and see is, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're we're, uh, we're totally inclusive, wrong, totally inclusive. Um, but uh, it, but it, it felt like that was pretty, pretty non-debatable on the field, but the, the, the easiest way to avoid controversy is to just keep the touchdown call to stand for replay, knowing, you know, knowing that it was going to be someone else's job to just say, yeah, that was actually the touchdown um, Mike, you and I last week uh, were talking about just from an from a ebb and flow, X and O's, where this game happens to be on the season, and and, and what direction the, 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 the Packers and the Eagles were headed in at that time. I think we I think we kind of both came away from that game or from away from that conversation feeling that as long as the Eagles put up a fight, um, that they were. That, that there was reason to think that the season wouldn't be over, even with, with, with a third NFC loss. Like we were, that was that was that was a talking point of ours. Like you would you'd be zero and three in the NFC, which would be really hard to overcome in theory. If those teams, you know, obviously they're gonna, you'd think they'd mathematically play in the wild card situation somehow. You know, so we talked about how you'd really have to focus on the NFC East at that point. Mike, you know, I think one of your stronger opinions was that you know you just felt you felt the Packers really just weren't um, weren't. An undefeated team, other than on paper, um, especially from the offensive side of things. You know, really, you know, we talked about how the defense seems legit, but offensively speaking, they didn't really feel like an undefeated team. And then, um, you know, I brought up from a, you know from a, from a trends standpoint that I like to you know try to rely on. Um, I, I liked a little bit the fact that that Green Bay had not lost at home yet on a on a Thursday night, just because expecting that to not happen forever. It felt like you know a legitimately good team that was somewhat desperate uh, would be the type of team to, to, be, to get that win, especially against a, a team that's probably not meant to be undefeated. Um, so yeah, so but but now right, so, but now that we got pa- you know that we're past the injection, we saw we saw the way uh, both teams played. We saw we saw the Eagles go to a running game, um, which is. It could be up for debate whether or not that was something that the coaching staff heard, you know, all over the place, and so they decided that they were going to commit to the running game, uh, or it's very likely that they might have just had that plan all along, or you know, injuries might have played a factor. But anyhow, it, it looked like a different team out there, offensively speaking. And so now, what's what, what's all you three guys take away, just you know, from what the actual performance was? I called that. I called that game. It played out exactly how I thought it was last week. I said 24-17, so I didn't get the score right. But it was a perfect spot for the Packers to lose. I mean, their offenses look like crap all year. Um, they've been bad against the run, and the Eagles actually ran the ball, so they actually did some homework. Jordan Howard um, went in fantasy games if he wasn't on the yeah, bench, right? Yeah. Plus, he had to, be, had to not be on your bench, though. <laughs> yeah. Unless you play in all players, uh, all players count league. But uh, I don't, I don't think it was necessarily season saving. I mean, it's week four, and, and the NFC. There's only one good team in the NFC right now. It's the Saints. So it's it's up for grabs, in my opinion. The the bad part is how bad our defense looks. Still looks bad. So that is concerning to me. But the division is there for the winning. There's a lot of season left, and they have momentum right now coming back home against a really bad Jets team. You gotta like where they're at right now. I still, I still think we overhyped the Super Bowl mm-hmm. parade a little bit under our injuries. Yeah. yeah, but the injuries are not to be understated. I mean, you're missing the, the team that we thought was going to compete for a Super Bowl has played one game this year as a team. So I'd like to see them get healthy. Now they're saying Deshaun's probably out till October 30th. I'd like to see this team get together and see how good they really are. But we're gonna have to wait, 
you know, almost another month to see that. Okay. I'll take the mic there. Um, I feel, I kind of disagree with you on it just being like a not month. It, for me, that Thursday, if I was an Eagles fan, would have been a must win game. Uh, you sit there and you play like garbage, basically up to and uh, on some yeah, aspect. They're down 10 nothing. In some aspect, even with the defense, just in general, up until that point, um, you have to start passing these teams because I, you're not built to win games on the road. You have to sit there and do something where you can get some games at the link come come playoff time. I don't, I don't think they're not like the old the, – like, I shouldn't say the old Eagles because that's only, what, two years ago at this point? But they're not built that way. They, they saw, It was two teams that were trying to figure out their identity. The Packers – Still don't have an identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, regardless of what the defense set there and quote unquote showed those first few weeks, I didn't even trust that coming from them. Um, as far as the Eagles go, back when they were rolling, everyone's talking about Carson Wentz, this, that, and the third. And yes, without a doubt, had a year before he got hurt. But at the core of what they were doing, they were ground and pound. They sat there and they were able to run the ball at will on most teams and able to sit there and stop it and play a little bit of defense on the back end, even though that second day has always been on the weaker side. Um, this season, that secondary is looking horrific, and but that's the identity at this point. You, they're going to have to sit there and take the air out of the ball. If they, I mean, I don't think they're built for shootouts, believe it or not. They have to do something where they, have to sit, where they sit there and control the trenches and dominate that way or try to win games that way and that sounds so cliche I get it but that's I think that's the best ticket in order to sit there and get to where they need to go because there's nothing on it their, their defense isn't as dominating as it was back in what 17 yeah and it's not even as dominating as you know to, to well, what Mike said the, 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 just the general talk about it right you well know, the 17 defense gave up the secondary was not good they gave up a lot of passing right, right. But, but they the, got to the quarterback but my front line yeah. got home yeah the front line's not getting home that way these right. days. So you, you have to you have to sit there and sort of mitigate that as much as possible. The best way to do that, hold on to that ball. Take some air out of it. At least until you get some weapons back. Maybe maybe right. put up some points, but right. I think that's the best way out of it. Uh, I think that's your identity this year. I mostly, I mean, your last point is the one that I'll hammer. Like this week, playing the Jets... You should more or less be able to give Wentz an honorary bye week. <laughs> he shouldn't have to do anything very hard at all. You get into third and medium, third and long, yeah, you got to throw for the first Sure. Time. But you need to establish that run. You need to continue establishing it through the season. The Jets are, in one way and one way only, a step up from the Packers. That's the run defense. Run defense for New York is actually – it's – Probably pretty average over the whole league, but it's a I strength. Think like eight. Quentin I think Beckers, like eight. Quentin Beckers, pretty good. Week two, though. Okay, so it's a strength on that team. You know. Yep. It's probably the thing they do best. Um, of course, they get a lot of practice because by halftime, teams are pretty much running out of the clock. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> the after this week, the Eagles' schedule on paper gets absolutely brutal. Oh, it, it, yep, it is a three yep. in the ro- three in a row on the road, all against teams that have either chances or are favorites to be in the playoffs. Oh, poor Eagles! I'm sorry, I'm a Raiders fan speaking. <laughs> got, can tell you one. Then you come home for Chicago, your bye week, then the Patriots and the Seahawks. I look at this. Right. That is six games in a row, right there of teams that I'm not rolling any of them out of the playoffs, and. Now, December's a piece of cake. That's the thing. If you can get to December at 500 or better, I think it's okay. I think it's all good because you get every one of the division opponents again. The Cowboys aren't a piece of cake, but that's the last week of the season. Sure. You get Miami, who will be, I mean, my God, you think they're one, dead two, right three, now? One, two, three, Cancun. Yeah. Will, they still, will the Dolphins still be trademarked I, at that point? I don't, I, don't, I don't know who will be playing for them, almost literally, right. at that point. Um, and then you have... Uh, one more game I, I I can't remember right now, but you got to play that one too. <laughs> um, but I hope that what they found in the running game isn't abandoned when things get hard. Because, right. as Carlos said, 
you're going to want games at the link. You don't want to squeak in on a wild card or it's probably one and done this year. The NFC is just, as I think Mike said, it's a mess. It's a mess. You could tell me any one of, I think I said before the season, you could tell me any one of nine teams would represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be surprised. I've narrowed it down. It's seven. Seven teams that I could believe would represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. I think Good news, get... the Eagles are one of them. Bad news, I don't There's... prefer them over any of the other six either. Right. The, uh, I think the other game you're trying to think of is the Giants. They actually, they had played, they actually played the Giants twice in December. Oh, in the month well, of December. I mean, I, oh, see, see, before the season, I would have said great. Danny Dimes. Right. But now, now, right. now the Giants are kind of at this, like, we believe in ourselves and we have nothing to lose. Right. Um, yeah, it's, and, it's, that's, and that's when the Giants are dangerous historically. So. No, it's true. But, yeah, I guess this, you know, and we're getting somewhat ahead of ourselves, but it's, but it's, worth, it's worth acknowledging. Um, but I guess you know to play along with your theme about how things set up in that regard. I guess a silver lining there is that the first meeting is at home. If yeah. if, it, if the last game of the season, if the, I mean if the Giants are still realistically mathematically involved at that point, that would be something. But if it's a situation where the Eagles were mathematically involved and the Giants weren't, you at least you know you get that one at the last game of the season when you know. Well, I, mean, I guess it would be nicer to be at home, but. I mean, yeah. But the one that is most likely to mean more as we sit here now is going to be at the link. Um, yeah, and I mean, Dallas, that's... Dallas is right in the middle of a three-game road trip. I can tell you all kinds of bad things about back-to-back road games. Well, yeah. I can't tell you much about back-to-back-to-back road games because they're <laughs> so damn unique yeah. that there's just nothing for me to go off. But I would bet it's not good. Try six of them. Yeah, no, I know. That's And the, that's and the thing that works here... Level. Yeah, and it doesn't even really, you know, we, we uh, what was it, I guess it was two years ago that where the Eagles stayed on the road for, a, for a, I think it was a back-to-back. It involved the Rams. Yeah, the Eagles stayed on the road. That's not going to work. I mean, you're, they're going to be yeah, in Minnesota, Minnesota Dallas, in Buffalo. Dallas. Buffalo. Yeah, I yeah. don't know where the hell you stay. Um, yeah, none, none of those goes, are yeah. desirable. It's, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, so you know, typically we, we take a break before we get into games out the bet and Survivor. Um, well, let's let's just keep rolling and go right into those because the break will set up better if we we come back from the break with uh, the California school talk. Um, all right, so uh, games not the bet. Where uh, where are we headed? Oh boy, we can look a lot of places this week. Actually, we honestly we could look in Philadelphia if we wanted to, but that's no fun. I will say, be careful. Either way. Just because if the Eagles approach it the way I think they should, establish that run, get out of there with a victory, and who cares if it's by 20 points or by 2 points? It probably won't be by just 2, but it might not be by 20 either. Anyway, so that's that one. Um, a lot of uncertainty with injuries. I tried to come up with better reasons than that, but with Buffalo and Tennessee, there's just so much uncertainty, both in really weird spots, what they're coming off of with Buffalo. Home loss in the division is normally a bad thing when it's to New England and you pretty much played them dead even for 60 minutes I would actually right. think you can take some positives out of it I love my future playoff uh, uh, no I, I, I like your future play a lot too and I, I thought I was going to like it even more till Allen went out um, Tennessee's defense. been a surprise yeah uh, the, the, the metrics don't love these guys but what I see I like them I like the fact that they're at home this week but you, you got to see it one or two more times. Like Mariota, he's so up and down, up and down. He's you know, he's he really he, he's AFC Jameis Winston. Um, it's the same thing there. So I would stay away from that game. It's uh, it's Tennessee minus three, which is the ultimate we don't know line. Mm-hmm. So why bother? Kind of the same thing with Jacksonville and Carolina. I actually loved Carolina when this came out because I saw them at like four and a half or five. And I thought that was somebody screaming from the heavens, take Carolina. <laughs> but it immediately got knocked down to three, and now it's back up to three and a half. It's just, it's ugly. It's non-conference. These non-conference games are so hard to get a read on. I'm going to stay away from that one as well. Um, Arizona Cincinnati. I, I, you know what? I was going to give that one out, but that's just my honorary. I don't want you to spend the precious time you have on earth. Watching, watching this that game, game. Right, right, right. so why bet on it and give yourself a reason to? Well, actually, you know what, you, you saying that, and you said that last week, or two weeks ago, and, and it didn't trigger this thought in my mind, but from the better standpoint, 
Is there ever an allure to betting a game, but 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 just kind of like saying, oh, I'll find out later." Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's kind of like the. For me, it's what, totals. Well, I got I got to think of a PG way to put this. <laughs> you know that girl in high school who has that reputation, and yep. you go out on a date with her just to say you did it. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Maybe you put twenty bucks on Arizona okay, Cat in Cincinnati stage. just to say you were the guy who was watching that game. I can't give you a good reason to do it. Well, what about the other side? Reason. What about what about you make the bet and just say I, you know, I'm obviously you don't want to make a bet that you're nervous about, right? So I'm, I, but uh, have I'll you ever made have you ever made a bet? Let's just say you if I were, you weren't nervous about the game, but you made a bet and just for whatever reason you couldn't really pay attention to it at all. Has it has not been able sure, to watch a game ever talked you out of not betting? Yeah, yeah, sure, that's happened. I mean, it, Only it's, kind game of, at this point. it's kind of the backwards effect of that where if something's on and you got nothing else to do, you throw a few bucks on it to make it entertaining. But, I mean, like, you know, let's say that there was somebody at this table who liked gambling so much that he put money on East Carolina versus Temple tonight. <laughs> please tell me he took East Carolina. He. Sorry, please tell me he who? took East Carolina. I'm oh, sorry. Well, hypothetically, no matter who he took, he can't watch that game. And even though he bet on it, he won't watch that game because if he goes home, his wife, if he's married, is going to say, can't we watch the Rangers? Can't we watch the NFL? Can't we watch this? Can't we watch that? Right, right. Why in the hell are we watching East Carolina and Temple? Rangers is a bar burner, by the way. 3-3. I'm telling you, there's something there this year, but that's neither here nor there. Um... So, yeah, Arizona Cincinnati, look, if you really want to bet it, take the over. They're both offensive coaches who are a little desperate to get their systems kick-started. And uh, right. they don't have much to lose right. at this point. And um, the flip side for that is the, uh, the Tennessee-Buffalo game. Drop the under, even even with that low number. I also have Cleveland and San Francisco as the Monday night game, and by rule, I don't give those as games not to bet. But I will say that everybody continues – to just love Cleveland, despite the fact that they seem to run hot and cold like 20 other teams in this league. I, I mean, look, San Francisco, off a bye, at home, on a Monday night, and you only got to give up a field goal on cross-country travel. Mm-hmm. Underrated defense, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. so, yeah, those, those are a few I got an eye on. Um, that also foreshadows we'll see. Survivor football for me a little we'll, bit. Uh, We'll try this because I gave Carlos three last week, and I think I went two zero and one on the ones I mentioned. Yeah, pretty solid. Uh, we'll talk. Uh, we didn't acknowledge tonight's game in any way, shape, or form yet, but you know the the, uh, the, the Seahawks are hosting the Rams. Yeah, that was kind of Seattle or nothing. For yeah, um, but it's not. And you know, they've been trending to the under right now. I think the Rams are up six is it with Seattle driving if they haven't scored Seattle already. Seattle scores. All right, there you go. Um, I'm, so here's the college play of the week, and boy, is it ugly. We'll actually do this. We'll call this the ugly college play of the week. (laughs) Maryland and Rutgers both got shut out in horribly ugly fashion last week. Don't do it. Closest either one came to scoring was the opponent's 31-yard line. Don't do it. Lost by a combined 111-0. to Here comes the over. This week, they meet in Piscataway. And it's going to be overwhelming. Here comes the over. It's going to be overwhelming. Here comes the over. At 54 and a half, Maryland and Rutgers, the over. It's ugly. It's disgusting, but it's going to catch. <laughs> Saw it coming. Um, okay, fair enough. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to go right into uh, games. I don't know, Mike, you, 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 are you not making any bets this week? I know you normally don't touch that segment, but. Bets? Yeah. I've, been, I've been telling Rob I've been doing the prop bets, the player bets. Do like, you have any prop bets going right now for the, um, week, for the weekend? I didn't pick it yet. I got I got uh, Phil Mickelson to win the Shriners tournament, though. Now we're going to leisure. <laughs> Betting on leisure. Now there's something I got. I got nothing. He's left-handed. Okay. I like that. Mickelson, I mean. I mean, he's been, he's been terrible <laughs> this year, and he's like 40 to 1. <laughs> so, five bucks. The hell? I mean, play, <laughs> player prop bets are a great way to go. You get the right kind of matchup, you know. Like, you, you're... you're um, Prediction with Jordan Howard last week. Yeah, Jordan Howard, two I, touchdowns. I don't know what his over under was for rushing yards, but I bet it wasn't the eighty seven that he had or whatever. Right. You know, he was very productive and for the fantasy players out there, if you're willing to agree to one set scoring system, you can do over unders on fantasy points in some books. Normally it's uh one point <laughs> for every ten insane. yards. 
six six points no for a touchdown, uh, what and what have you. So you got you got to check the scoring rules because they're not right. they're not going to like uh, amend them to your liking. But you can do it. I mean, you could go out there this week and take all Sean Jeffrey over eleven and a half points, or you know whatever that number would be. So they are doing a great job finding ways to make this appeal to everyone. All right, Survivor so Football, and you know, before we get into, there's a couple things I want to bring up here. First, I made the ultimate, ultimate boo boo on Sunday as it, as it goes to Survivor Football. Anyone want to adventure? I guess. I, I know it threw out recommendations. I'm guessing you didn't take one of them. It was 115 when I realized I hadn't put in my picks. Oh, nice. Uh, would be the on ultimate boo boo. I ended up having to go into work, uh, and it just kind of impacted my morning a little bit and my, my train of thought and I just I didn't put my picks in I normally put my picks in Sunday morning unless I really on, a, on the rare occasion that I know I'm taking a Thursday night game or so that now I you're just eliminated know. or then you're just so I'm to... in two leagues and in, in, in one I am eliminated um, so what happened was I was um, it was we were actually on our way to the Phillies game and I realized oh my god I didn't make my picks and I, but I was a passenger so I started logging into the sites. Like it would have mattered. Yeah, well, the, 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 <laughs> you would have made your pick while driving, right? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Actually, yeah, that, that, now I see where you're going with that. Yeah, uh, and I wouldn't have pulled over either. Just let's be real honest. I probably would have had, you know, in hindsight, I wish I was driving because I probably would have thought about it less and, and maybe benefited from it. But um, I gave so, you one. Sweat it out. But well, here's the thing. I knew. I basically knew going into. Sunday that I planned on taking the Chargers in one of them. I didn't want to take them in both. I didn't necessarily think they were going to lose or really at risk for losing, and Mike and I talked about this last week. But I knew I was going to take the Chargers in one of them. And then I was a little and then I was a little curious. Um, I Chargers both thought, are no brainer though. Because I just don't like to do that. They don't I I, I, feel, I feel you with and for the first all time, the eggs in one basket. But they are so much better on the road than they are at home. So but, much better. But here's the thing, though: the Chargers started at one, which I didn't. I thought I was thinking they were four twenty five. It was one fifteen when I when I remember. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So it's one fifteen. I'm thinking the Chargers start. I, I pull up the, the page, and the Chargers are already playing. So I'm like, damn, right? So, I, I, so, but back to I was thinking that I was going to take the Chargers in one, and then I was a little torn. I, you know, I thought about the Steelers. I thought about um, the Rams. I thought about. The Patriots. I thought about the Colts. Um, I thought about the Giants. These were teams Jeez. that I thought about. The Chiefs entered my mind because of just how incredibly good they are. Um, but so yeah, I'm not going to say I didn't think about them. But to be, but to be honest, I don't think I was going to take them. Were you, um, is that because you're going to save them, or not because I was going to save them? Just because they were on the road. That was the okay. tipping. That was the what tipping game. Point. That was. That was the tipping point. They were on the road. They were home. No, I did. I if, really don't like my homes being that decade, in that uh, division for the next decade. I'm if, sorry. Go ahead. If they were home, that would it would have been probably my pick because I don't I don't buy into the Lions yet. Right. That being said, I still think I'm still you surprised should. the Lions you hung should. in. But yeah. Now now I kind of do. But um, they're but, missing but people in the on moment. Defense. Right. They do. But they in do the a moment. lot of little things. Well, they, not to sidetrack this into the Lions, but. Yeah. The last two weeks, I've watched their games, obviously, when they played the Eagles, and then again Sunday because that was just a good game. Detroit does a lot of little things really well, and I think over time this year, the way the Eagles bottled up Kyrian Johnson is going to really be a gold star on their run defense's resume. I mean, he had something like 24 touches for 51 yards in that game. Yeah. The other games I've seen, he is... Just, just a reliable four yards at a time, and you know more explosive too, and also a little mistake prone as we saw in the play at the goal line. But I mean, the Eagles turned in into a complete non-factor, and that speaks to Detroit too. They won that game with him doing very little. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, but I guess you know, I guess you know, it's if had the Chiefs been home, I'm sure they still would have won. But you know, in, when I, when you have to make that decision, and I'm also kind of like kicking myself while I was a passenger in the car. Who knows? I might have kicked myself while I was driving, trying to trying to pick you know a game. As well. but, um, so yeah, so so. But a funny thing happened when I logged into one of the, the one site. It still let me take the Chargers. 
And now here's the, so I'm not a shyster, right? So as I'm doing this, I have I'm, 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 I have to like make a conscious decision as as to the site's letting me take the chargers. Do I really want to like do this, right? Well, here's the thing. To be totally honest with you, the reason <laughs> I the reason <laughs> I ended up doing keeping score, your survivor. <laughs> right, no, no, but here's why I wanted the 15 the, minutes. Well, it's still nothing, nothing, bro. No, no, they were losing. They the were, losing. were losing. Yeah, they were. Um, actually, yeah. Charges were losing. But here's the thing. I wanted to find out if. I mean, if it let me do it, because now, now I have concerns about being in that league, because that means that there's no reason to think that people aren't every week at least one person, if they've realized it, is waiting until games are X amount of game minutes old before they make their pick. Well, bring that up if you lose. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, I was ex- I was half expecting like an email because this, this the, the, when you make your pick and it and it refreshes and it shows you your pick is locked, it shows you what time you made your pick. So the admin, I would imagine, can go into my profile and see Joe made his picket at one, you know, one twenty-two. Joe, rule number so, one: if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. No, I know. But, rule number two: yeah, see rule number one. I, I, I you understand that. that. But now, <laughs> but now, but now I know that I'm in a league that allows you to make a pick. You know, you might have caught the know. one. You might have caught the one glitch. Yeah, in the but whole yeah, system. yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Is that your fault? Is that the commission's fault at that point? Well, what I think is, it's. I think that it's. I don't know. I, I'm. I'm just, I don't think, you know, obviously this league is on the up and up, let's put, let's put it that way. Um, but anyhow, so what, So then what happened was, so so in the league that is on the up and up, and when it showed you at that time that all those t- games had already started were locked, I I basically was staring down the barrel of what I considered either the Rams or the Steelers on Monday night, and I, I, I went with what I considered to be the better team. I was not very enthused about it. Time out. At what point did the Steelers look like a good team to you? At any point this year? Well, that's what I'm saying. I took okay. I took the Rams because they're just the better team, right? Okay. That's what I'm saying. So I took the Rams, and that game ended up being a circus. It's you know it should have been in theory an okay pick. Like you know before you got here, Carlos Rob was talking about how was the, you know, the Rams was really the don't have lock a, of the week. they don't have a uh, home field advantage. Me and Mike were talking about this game last week. What you had you Buccaneers had Rams and Survivor, trash. right? And you know. There's just no way they sh- they sh- that that game yeah. should turn out. That's the way why the Rams are fraud. But it did. You can't and win that game. And then there, um, I, I think Buck, I think Tampa Bay is in that Detroit category. I, I wish I not as long as Jameis is there. No, not not, <laughs> not long term, but better than. You well, think Arians they will are. turn them around. They are. He will. Right. That's the thing. Arians. Weapons, so. Right. They, weapons. Arians. Mm-hmm. And they were. They hadn't had a win yet. But damn, the Rams still. I mean, they're down. They, when they went, got within five, I was there. I was there. I'm like, oh yeah. And then I was like, oh, no. The Bucks were the better team week one. <laughs> they were the better team last week. I figured who they played in between. Right. But two of the, at least two of the Giants, th- they've been a better team in yeah. most of those games so far. Well, I would have this the Steelers, week they go to outcome. New Orleans. I haven't been winning that one out, right? I, yeah, and I, I thought about putting it on a don't bet this because the whole world is buying up New Orleans stock after a – Disgustingly ugly 12 10 victory over the Cowboys, which I'll give them credit. They they pretty much bottled up Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, they limited Prescott. I think their defensive game plan was brilliant, right down to the Hail Mary at the end where you saw them bring pressure, which no one ever does. Um, Tampa Bay, though, I mean, this sounds like cherry picking now. I wish I'd been here last week. They were my biggest bet of the season to this point on with, Sunday. With points. With nine and a half points. Yeah, yes. with points. Just because, look. We've seen LA's. If LA's going to beat you, they're going to do it with the offense, right? right. They put them in a defensive game, like what they had last year the against. Isn't there? But that's, that's <laughs> what I was just going to say. That game turns into a fifty. What was it? Fifty-five forty-three by the end or something? Right. And Tampa Bay's defense were the ones making plays, and Dominican Sue, who's somehow still in the league, right, running back the late touchdown is the highlight we all saw. Right, right, right. But Goff was getting hit. He threw two picks early. One of them got pick six. Sure. Godwin, who I know is near and dear to your heart, and Mike Evans. You know, I'm watching all week as everybody, the rest of the world, picks up on the fact that Kirk Cousins sucks. (laughs) And they're saying, (laughs) Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen, that's the best pair of receivers in the league. I say, what are you, on drugs? It's not even the best one in the NFC. That's Godwin and Evans. Those two, I don't, I don't know how good Jameis is. I still don't. I still remember the guy I watched at Florida State. But he, those two, plus O.J. Howard, plus their second tight end, Cameron Brait, 
gives them a little bit of like an Ertz Goddard look there. Right. And if they ever figure out that Ronald Jones is their best bet, along with um, a, um, a, go, a, a Goomba Wale, right. and, and Peyton Barber just kind of like fades into the background, it's a dangerous offense. Arians is it probably is, the best coach for Winston, too. And if, I he gets to see with, yeah. if he gets to see Winston, or Winston gets to see with him, then he's done. And I could totally see, you know, taking them with nine and a half, you know. But, but st- even still, like, if had, had we had that conversation last week, I could say, yeah, okay. Take, yeah, I, I would take the Tampa, Tampa Bay with nine and a half, but still expect, the, you know, still think the Rams could win that for survivor purposes. All right, so right for this week, and, you know, um, this was certainly not a Thursday game that I was considering in any way, shape, or form. I'm sure nobody was, so let's just uh, move on. I think right now I have I have one team in, in Tier 1. It's um, one obvious one. And I have a couple who I would just entertain because you never know. Maybe you're in three or four leagues and, 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 and need you know a second option. But you know, Tier 1 for me is the team we, we open up this podcast talking about. Two obvious the, ones. Uh, as the Philadelphia Eagles at home hosting hosting the Jets. Uh, now there's talk about Three. Sam Darnold being awake enough to play. Um, he literally okay. said in a press conference today, I think I'm ready to go. I just don't want to go out there and get killed. Right. Yeah, I don't I know a, how I, you I get. Pretty... Not, not killed as in, yeah, <laughs> no, killed he's, as in yeah, he's spleen. Afraid of they usually away. tell people, well, yeah, his spleen is in trouble. And yeah, and, yeah, well, he had an enlarged spleen, which is what mono is, kind of. Right. And if you get hit, in that area, it's at a significantly increased chance for rupture. Oh, yeah. If your spleen ruptures, I mean, it's not lights out, but it's not it's good. It's not good on a football right. field. Right, Um And, yeah, I mean, usually they – I don't think they send you back to school as soon as you're over mono anyway. Um, I, I certainly don't think <laughs> anyone in their right mind is going to tell someone to, you know, pat them up and go, go into Philadelphia and play. Although there might be some funny signs, though. Um from the fans, see how this creative be filled up. <laughs> um, other games that I would casually think about um, as we run through this. So, um, Patriots. Patriots tier one. Yeah, what's your right. third? I mean, team your third? What's your third? I, I got Kansas City tier one. Okay. Is Ty playing? Until you tell me he's healthy. He's he's trending to play. Even he's if trending to play. KC tier one at home. Night game, Andy Reid. Uh, I, 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 I can see that. I can see that. I guess you know from the context. But let's let's think that most people have already used Kansas City. Um, but still, I'm, I'm, your, I'm just here point. to give the tears. Right, I get you. I get you. I, I get you. Oh. Um, I, I can I can see that. I I can see that. Uh, I I'd still take the Eagles first. So I, I guess I have a tier one A and B. I, I still would take the Eagles first. I think the Eagles are they're they're playing the you know the Jets don't have a win yet. But I don't see desperation in this team. I see dysfunction. I mean, they're, 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 their quarterback is dealing with, you know, it's just not yeah, as it's, it's, it's not as Is, is Luke Falk definitely playing? No. 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 Oh, Dar- Darnold has uh, an appointment. I forget what kind. Even tomorrow, if it doesn't change my mind. That will determine his status. Oh, it changes my mind. You know what I mean, it's not changing my mind. He has to be clear for content. Pa- yeah, right? Patriots. Patriots are the clear and You're taking Patriots choice. first. Yes. That game's a dunk because... The only reason not to take the Patriots is if you're already used a yeah. opposed to taking road teams. B well, that, already did so, or C are one of those people saving them save for him, yeah. when they well, play Miami he, yeah. or when they play Miami at home. Um, Gruden, uh, Jay Gruden, actually came out and said, "I don't really have a game plan for this week." We ha- we don't. That's have a, a good way to go here. against the Belichick <laughs> defense. All right, okay, I, I could see Patriots being on the same plane as the Eagles. I'm still going to take the Eagles, and it's not because I don't like the Patriots. Higher. I just at their their home. I'm take their their gate. They've got a they had a long week. You know they they've got extra rest. I don't think the Redskins are going to win that game. I would just I would more expect the Eagles to win that game. I think if there's something that could go wrong, it could more so go wrong in that Eagles game. Oh sure, if we're going to start talking about you know, I see a lights out. I see a lights out defense, and you still got 12 behind center. So well, as long you know, as that happens, you're fine. I could see someone then. If, that, if we're going to go down that you know crazy road, I could see someone on you know Washington trying to pull an all-out water boy and go and cleat first to the neck on Brady. That <laughs> tends to never happen unless yeah. you name is Bernard Pollard. So. I know, I know. Yeah, and even then, you put who's who's going to back up now? Stidham. Stidham. Stidham in there. Good Hand off to Sony, Rex Burkhead, yeah. and uh, White ten times each. 
I mean, nobody win, advocated that Washington's going to win, win or even be in the game. But. You know what I mean? They're New England's right. barely letting up 200 yards. I know. Here's the only thing you got to ask yourself, and even as someone who counts himself as a fan of the team, is there someone on the team you're going against who could just have a day and beat you right. single-handedly? And, Le'Veon right. Bell's not that guy anymore. If he ever was, he's kind of somebody who's a great piece in a good offense. To me, he's never been a guy who carries an offense. Really? And I mean, I just, we'll he see, just, right? I mean, if he if he well, finishes this season with fifteen hundred total yards and a dozen touchdowns, then I revisit this opinion. Okay. What I see so far is a somewhat brighter shining star in a field of black holes. I think he derailed it. I think he sabotaged his own career Only just from a physical end and from a. Well, maybe not financial, mm-hmm. but I just don't now, fin- out no, here. He fin- should be healthier. Financially, he but definitely sabotaged his career, but physically, no. Yeah. no. He should he, be better. He's yeah. got an extra year. Not unless you're really, really taking care of yourself in every way, shape, or form. And you well, know, going, what, from, going from fat to in shape is one thing. You versus know what I mean? Just about just game speed and, mm-hmm. you know, just again not getting arthritic. As you I, 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 he's a young person. So I'm in, not... In real... Human being terms, not in NFL. Terms. Well, even in football years, he's a young person. He's not. Well, he's not there. old. Yeah. I mean, he had his ACL, whatever, back at uh, Michigan State. But in general, that actually with Pittsburgh too, right? Or one ACL. Okay. I think, he, I think he was sophomore at MSU. Right, but I mean, outside of that, I mean, he's been relatively healthy. He's not someone that takes big hits, and you got you get to point in running backs are more cognizant these days of right. their longevity and their health and well-being in general. Um, the well-being, no, he took care of that one just fine. Financially, he screwed himself. But that comes with that, that, comes with that position in particular. I know we want to move on, but the one thing I'll say there is, whatever age he is now, when he's 33, 34, nobody's going to look back and say, yeah, but he's really 32, because remember, blah, 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 blah. You right, know, right, right. You got a certain shelf life as an NFL player, especially a running back. And to take a year out of that, look, he's got more money than I do, but he must have felt really strongly to give away a year of earning potential, I think. Yeah, but he also picked, he picked a bad situation, too. You yes. got to come, right. yes. come back to a right. contender. You, can't, you right. can't go to a team with a bad coach and a bad quarterback. Right, right. He took the bag. <laughs> I know, I know, Gregor ain't, ain't going to agree with this, but it, it, and I'm not going to take them in in my one solo league. But the 49ers at home on Monday night come no off a bye with Cleveland traveling. It's uh, it's getting 49ers them, but are it's, fraudulent. I said earlier I like the 49ers in the game, but that's not a good option. It's not if as you good have as, any of those other three. Or well, no, no, no. It's, it's 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 clearly not as good an option. It's a hollow it's, three and Jimmy Garoppolo still stinks. I know. I'm not talking. About, I just, you know, coming off the. I think the. I think the the the, the Niners. You guys think that was record is just as hollow as the Browns. So. But you guys think that was a big win for Cleveland? Yeah, that's a huge week. win. Does Cleveland yeah, now, nice now. And does, so, does, does Cleveland match that effort? Maybe going west and San Francisco off a of bye at home. There's some stat I looked at. The teams who are three and zero playing at home, real strong against the spread, like a sixty something percent number. Um, those are things I'm more interested in than other people. But if San Francisco covers, that means they won. So we got we got Cleveland making its second road game. And again, I, I, I'm, I'm in no way, shape, or form putting this game on the same level as the ones we already talked about. But just look at all these factors: Niners coming off a bye at home Monday night, Cleveland with its second game in a row. Yeah, you can't tell me that it's not even within conscious thought. No, it's it, it's it's in conscious it is, thought. It but it's, it's it's not it's not one of the three. Yeah. Well, no, no. All those other all those other games are better. But for, just for purposes of acknowledging, you know, interesting things to consider. You know, because you know, in another another two or three weeks, we're lit- we're going to have we're going to have no choice but to go down the whole slate because people are going to have more teams used. There's going to be bye weeks and all that other nonsense. Pretend you're at Sea World so. and ride the Dolphins, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll get into uh, the new way of life, eventually for California college athletes. It's about time. Cronies, we are yeah, it was it was pretty uh, pretty good duration there. Um, we're live at Nippers. Hear us on the Grueling Truth Syndicated, as well as find us on iHeartRadio and iTunes and Spotify. We'll be right back at you. 
Can't get enough of the Philly sports jabronis? Want to get together over tea and scones and share with us your life story? No thanks. We hate tea and scones. But we do have a website you can visit that offers all the jabroni action you can handle. Go to www.phillysportsjabronis. That's J-A-B-R-O-N-I-S dot com. Yahoo! The Philly Sports Jabronis are everywhere. We're online. We're streaming through the internet airwaves. Can you hear me? We're probably hiding in your bushes. Hey, get out of there. Oh, and we have social miscreant. I mean, media pages. Find us on Facebook and on Twitter at Philly Sports Jabs. And for God's sakes, trim your bushes. It's like Jumanji in here. Who are your top five Philly outfielders of all time? What's your pick for the top five all-time Philadelphia sports jerseys? Who are the top five Philly athletes you'd never let babysit your kids? Let us know by visiting my top five at phillysportsjabronis.com and let us know. Again, that's my top five. And the website is phillysportsjabronis.com. Philly Sports Jabronis. I'm Joe Dareth, Mike Greger, Rob Sr., and Carlos Slade. We're live at Nippers. Someone lost a uh, tray of uh, something. <laughs> Don't get the uh, pepperoni pie. Um, okay, so this week, the state of California had an, you know, they, an act was passed, signed into law, I believe it is what the legal terminology is. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Cal, uh, uh, collegiate athletes in the state of California over the course, of, well, not over the course, but in three years' time will be as we sit here today, eligible to collect money for such things as, um, well, I think it basically boils down to collecting money on their likeness. So uh, video games is one of the big talking points. Uh, jersey sales is one of the big talking points. Uh, they're probably the two major talking points. Is, am, I, am I missing anything? Autographs. Yeah. autographs. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly their likeness. Not, now, a, a key thing here is, you know, not to be paid by the school. The school doesn't pay them the money. They just... They can get an agent, and, or, or, or a store can say, uh, "Come sign some autographs," uh, or whatever, whatever jersey manufacturer Names makes a jersey. Of jersey. Um, or and, you know, and I guess you know, I, one thing I didn't read was, you know, does it does a number alone imply like this? And I, I believe it does, but I'm sure that will go to court. You know, if you buy a, a Penn State jersey or you know a school that doesn't have a name on them to begin with. When you buy a number at a given point in time, you know who you bought at that given time. That's likeness. It'll be real interesting to see how that plays out. But um, the only wrinkle there is you cannot, you cannot, and I don't, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go kicking and screaming because it's it's a, it's a step forward. But I do not agree with the fact that you can't collect on a jersey sale if if your school's official jersey is, um, you know, is coming into play. So it's the like the only thing I would say there is. The idea of retired jerseys in football, anyway, when you're carrying 85 scholarship players, okay, if you, I don't know, help me think of a school that had like one guy hit it real big and nobody else ever touched his level. Um, Delaware with Flacco. All right, there you go. Okay. It's a good one. If you're Joe Flacco and you went to the University of Delaware and you are by far the best player to come out of your school this generation, aren't you going to put an inordinate amount of pressure on the school to retire your jersey because now that number is yours in perpetuity yeah. probably yeah so you, i mean you become yeah. a business person are you allowed to retire become... numbers in college football? yeah do they I do mean, that yes you can I, I don't think many schools do because of the reason i just said um but you can do it because if you don't do that that yeah you can never enforce that unless it's a retired jersey you can never enforce that rule right so I mean, name on it right exactly you know another thing you can do is like let's just say you know so like you know Adidas and Nike are basic and, and Under Armour are like the three the three you know don't forget the jump man logo seven jump man jump man oh oh yeah Michael Jordan but um but even if like let's just say you know you're you go to school wherever Ohio State and Ohio State is under contract with Nike and all these Nike jerseys you can't recoup on well you can still go to any uh Jersey producer, you can have a jersey. You can have you can you can get you can order jerseys for yourself. You can order a shipment of your own number threes that are not, um, you know, as long as they don't have a, a logo or as long as they don't infringe on trademark. You can you, you can just kind of become your own jersey, you know, salesman or whatever. But um, so I'm in favor for for this this act in uh, in a couple ways. Number one, because I think uh, college athletes should be able to to 
uh, make money on their on their likeness being used because other people are making money on it. And you know, if 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 the um, what's the term? It must be the money, Joe. An amateur, yeah. Right. No, I'm saying if, was if, Ed O'Bannon, didn't he sue? Well, that, yeah. didn't he no, sue he's back in the day. He's still part of it. He's still part of this. He was, video game. He was mentioned. Email? He was mentioned. He's still mentioned in all these cases. The average um, athlete for that got about twelve hundred dollars. That was involved in Ed O'Bannon's suit. Right. You know how much the lawyers tell Cone? Oh my God. Right. Forty-seven million. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, so they're, I think you know, this, they're still I getting ripped law, off. I, I mean, that's the thing. They're still. Cases why this law? Is so oh, it is. Weird. It is. And you know, truth be told, the college athletes are still going to be getting ripped off. They just won't be getting as ripped off as much, and at least some people will be losing money from their pockets that they should have lost a long time ago. Um, but I'm in favor for this for the reason that I, I do believe that if, if an institution can make money on an amateur then, damn it, the human being should be able to make money on that amateur, too, on, on the amateur that, that he or she is. Um, I'm also in favor of it because if you really... Well, I think that, you know, because from a financial standpoint, the first thing that gets thrown out there, I believe, is that, oh, well, you know, college athletes get a scholarship and they have a free ride and this, that, and the third, which is not... <laughs> they get, they cool, get some money. coaches' bonuses right. and credits. So well, that works. But while, you know, it, it takes, they have to time commit to practice and games and travel. They still got to, they still got to, in theory, make the grades, right? They don't, so they don't even have time to, in theory, right? In, in very loosely fitting theory, which is going to, it's going to be impacted by this. But, you know, they don't have the time. One thing that's not debatable is they don't really have the time to work part time, right? So yeah, they're getting a scholarship. They're, they're getting, right, right, and in yeah. some cases they're not allowed, right? You know, unless you know, unless they're working under the table, which is you're technically not that's allowed. That's how they get in trouble. So yeah. you can you, you got a scholarship, great. You got free room and board, that's great. You, you can't friggin' go out and buy yourself a friggin' slice of pizza a lot of times because where where are you getting that pocket money? Unless you know, unless you're you're scheming, you know, in a ways that we know people well, are. I mean, daddy but, have money. Right, but this is—I think that's all a byproduct of the fact that amateur athletes are getting, have been getting shafted for years. You wouldn't have to—you wouldn't have to, you know, receive a car or get money on the sly if you got paid rightfully. You know what I mean? Um, and then the third thing—and I'm sorry, I—I'll um, I, stop talking here for, for a couple minutes. But the third thing, and then, Rob, this is kind of what I preluded to when we were chit-chatting before we started recording um, that I like about this. In the very, very long run, right? Because we're, we're, you know, the conversation that that is coming into play here is like, okay, well, are California schools going to be banned by the NCAA? Are California schools going to going to just start on their own and recruit, you know, recruit other states who might follow suit, like California, into what could become a league that could rival the NCAA, and so on and so forth? And in that comparison, man, Joe D, before he's dead, might get the chance to see no national championship in college football. No national And I would like that. Yeah, because if, if let's just say a long time from now, if 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 what happens is a rival league is created that that competes with the whatever exists of the NCAA, there's not a na- you're not national anymore. Yeah, but they're not now. The, well, the you're kind of not national the now. College football playoff is not NCAA. It's not like March Madness, right? The college football playoff is a creation of the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, the Pac Twelve. Uh, the NCAA, you know, they have no, they have no stake in it. Well, they do, but which, which one of those teams won't actually make it? Right. Everybody has given the NCAA this jurisdiction over their programs. Right. Ohio State University, University of Michigan, Penn State University, uh, on down to Wake Forest and uh, the smaller sure. Power sure. Five schools. I think it's hard to say, you know, when one state, even a big state like California, passes this law and the other 49 haven't done anything yet, it's hard to say what the unforeseen ramifications are going to be. But I really think this is the beginning of the end of the NCAA, at least right. in the revenue sports. Okay. Okay? Because the Which only reason, the only reason that, you know, uh, what was his name, Terrell Pryor got in trouble for selling all that memorabilia for to get himself a free tattoo or whatever that was. The only reason that mattered was because the NCAA says he can't do it. Right. Ohio State doesn't have any rules saying he can't do that. Neither does the Big Ten, right? Right. The Big Ten could, I mean, I'm sure the other schools would get pissed off, but 
the Big Ten, in theory, could care less if Terrell Pryor gets sure. paid ten thousand dollars a game by Ohio State. You know, but back to your earlier point. Um, I, I know the Fab Five documentary. It was either Jalen or Weber who said, and I'm paraphrasing here. He said something like, "I think when I really, really realized how much I was being taken advantage of was when I walked past a store." And saw my jersey being sold for seventy-five dollars a piece, and then walked into Taco Bell down the street and borrowed two bucks from one right. of my teammates right. so yeah. I could eat dinner. Right. He said that was kind of the turning point for me. And Chris Weber's older than I am. I mean, so Shaylin, that that's been a long, long time. Oh, yeah. And this this is just um, this is evolution. I have no other word for it. Yeah. This was going to happen eventually. And frankly, as a Penn State fan, as a Michigan fan, a, a school that's, you know, endowment is like the size of the national GDP, <laughs> this is only going to help competitive. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I really don't, I really can't find too many too many negatives right now. I, I really can't. The only, the only potential negative would, would be if the NCAA was so strong that, you know, that uh, that another league couldn't, couldn't survive. You know, try try to form and couldn't survive, or that people would just be too afraid, or that the politics would be whatever the politics are, and and people wouldn't, you know, wouldn't leave the NCAA, or states would be, would be afraid to kind of go rogue and stuff like that. Well, right now the negative is uh, recruiting advantage. Right now, until other conferences, schools, or whatever do it, you have a clear advantage if you're one of those Cali schools. Uh, let me get let me get think. Hey, go to USC. Sure. And I know I'm the number one player in the land, and I can get paid for right. my likeness and whatever. So, thank God for that, because there was no reason before this to go to UCLA or USC. Right, 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 actually, right, right. No, but that's, I think that's a, really, that's a really good point. And one wrinkle that I hadn't thought of that was, of all states for this to happen and for it to really have a chance, it's California. Because, you know, it's, it's probably pretty easy to turn your nose up at, you know, at the NCAA, especially when you're friggin' toes in the sand and fingers and other things. Not just that, it's a it's a it's a pretty pretty politically liberal area and that's where a lot of this seems to come from. They think, you know, New York is next. They think, you know, Florida will drop after that. I think Carol, South Carolina already agreed. South Carolina. To and see, that takes it to the other side. If South Carolina passes that, Bam, it's suddenly happy. it's not just those hippies in California, right? Yeah. So this is this is something, you know, with all the talk that goes on about politics, this is something I think people on both sides of the aisle are going to give to you. Because, like we were kind of alluding to earlier, I don't see the downside. I really don't. The idea right. of a scholarship being fair compensation for somebody like Zion is just ridiculous. It's like telling it's, the it's like telling the kid with a four O in nuclear physics that he can use the rec center for free. Right. It's, it, it's <laughs> Zion's not at college because he wants to get a degree. He's there because right. you're not letting him go directly. That's a, yeah. That's an interesting the, perspective too. I never looked at it know, that Tra- way. Trevor Lawrence, same thing. You think he's graduating from Clemson on time, or do you think he's leaving? the second that ball game ends next right, year. Here. I hadn't looked at it that way. You know, so... It's, it's true. For the, for, the, for the volleyball player or the uh, men's golfer with a 3.9 getting a free ride to Stanford as a result, and by the way, they don't really get free rides, they get partial rides, it's probably fair. Yeah, or at least fair as a starting point. In, unless your name's Tiger, yeah. your men's golf team isn't bringing a lot of revenue to the school. Um... Uh, Zion Williamson is. Trevor Lawrence is. Yeah, fair as a starting point for sure. Um, what about M- Mike? Do you have any any thoughts one way or the other? Any any? What's your kind I, of gut? What's your kind? I know you hadn't like yeah, studied it too been, much, but what's your gut reaction? I haven't been following it, but I've always thought that athletes should get paid. That college athletes should get paid. I mean, everyone else is profiting off of them. Why right. shouldn't they get paid? I don't. I, I I think they should actually get a paycheck though. Like how are they gonna yeah, how are right. they gonna pay someone for their like I don't know how that's gonna work. Right. I thought for the video games, do they use their names now? It's when I used to play NCAA double A football, they didn't use the names. Yeah, that's the thing, and there's a lot that's gonna have to come into play over the course of the next three years. Like, yeah, how do you get paid? Like, I mean, who, who's going to negotiate the the licensing with you know, with the video game? I mean, they have you a know? lot to work out. And yeah, like Rob said, if it if it works, 
and these kids are making money, then everyone's going to go out to the California schools. So everyone's going to have to adapt to it. Right. It's, yeah, right. I, exactly. I, I, I don't know that this will ever okay. come to fruition the way that we are talking about it. No, more, it's more so much fantasy, adopted. yeah. Hopefully, it'll be a national law. Hopefully, somebody in Congress will propose that. Right, become a federal kind and of it'll thing. Happen. Right now, yeah. And I, I don't know enough about the legal system to yeah, know exactly. Uh, all I know right now is it it, 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 it it falls under state state law, right? So it's it's yeah. a state mandated Mike. thing, like because 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 you know everything from time difference, you know time zones to just there's no there's not consistency across the country. So it's something that a state can do. Now that doesn't mean that the, that the Fed can make it a federal law. That would be much more further down the road. But for right now, yeah, it would have to be state, and it might be better off state to state. But Mike's right. For now, I mean, Trevor Lawrence's likeness is worth several times more than the backup point guard for Kansas State. Sure. Um, you know, that's something that they'll have to work out. Yeah. Is it worth more than two attack of Iowa's? I don't know. That's what will be interesting. Are these guys able to negotiate, or have, I'm sorry, are their agents able to negotiate? You know, if Lawrence gets X amount, can next year's Clemson quarterback get X plus 10%? Right. I don't know how it's, that'll work. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fascinating. Um... The other thing that Mike said as far as, you know, one of my just general thoughts on, on how athletes can can and should get paid in the moment, I've always thought that an athlete, well, I shouldn't say always, but as it's become a topic of conversation, I've had time to think about it and be a student myself, not an, not an athlete, but a student. Um, I, I think that a long time ago, and, you know, who knows, if the NCAA wasn't so greedy, maybe it never would have had to come to this, but I feel like... The college athlete, whether they're a scholarship recipient or not, should be paid as a work study, right? It's It should be a work study because you don't have time to go out and get a job, right? So if, if, the, if, if the general person can go to school, get tuition assistance, but I mean, it's not it's not many people who don't get tuition assistance, right? Even if even if you're getting money, all your money from mom and dad, it's still assistance. Like, you mean athletes or? Just in general. Think about the average person. They apply for college, and they're getting. Most people fall into some kind of. I mean, while I went to co- where while get, I went to college in state anyway, I, I don't think I did. No, I, not I, at I all. Just, I, I mean, while I was at Penn State, while I was out of state, different story. Oh, okay. But yeah, going to school in state, I don't think. But but whatever. That that's not really. Um, yeah, so I don't. I, I mean, I, not I hear what everybody. You're saying, but think, if you're getting some, I mean, a lot of a lot of students are getting to let's say or at least a percentage of students are getting tuition assistance. Well, they can still go out and get a job. Like they're 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 getting tuition assistance. It's saving them on their tuition, and they can still go out and get a part time job or work study because they have the time to do it. If you're on an athletic team and you are legitimately going to class and filling your duties as the athlete, you do not have time to get a job, at least not year round. Um, and every sport's becoming a year-round sport. They're not right? year-round being so, a key there. So you should be able to – your, your, your time during practice, your time during games, your time during travel, it should all be a work study. And if the NCAA wasn't so greedy – and not just the NCAA. If the, if the institutions in the NCAA weren't so greedy, maybe that could have been a reality and maybe that could have been good enough. But, hey – I think I, here, I, here we are. I quit the rowing team because I wanted to drink beer and sleep. <laughs> like, it's like, you're not paying. <laughs> Why am I practicing twice a day? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the other side of this is you're really just making something that's going on anyway above board. College athletes don't get paid the way underage drinking is illegal. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and name names, but... Do I truly believe every kid out on the field for, I'll pick on myself for Michigan, on Saturday is not being compensated in any way, shape, or form? Mm-hmm. I mean, they come out, you know, they'll come out. Mi- Michigan has that holier-than-thou reputation they love to play where, well, the only reason we can't compete with this one and that one is our academic standards and blah, 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 blah. Right, 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 right. That doesn't they, One, <laughs> they do it too. Yeah, it's, it's really the same program, one's for Catholics and one's for but anyway, um, there was one guy who played at Michigan, and there was a story out there. I don't know who put it out there. It said he turned down three hundred thousand dollars from another university to play at Michigan. 
I would have to be the most diamond in the wool, wool maize and blue hearted moron to believe that he said, no, I'll go there and play for free. Sure. Does that mean Michigan threw him 300 grand? No, it doesn't. Do I believe that he said no to $300,000 to play at Michigan for free? No, I don't. I don't know what the truth is, but I'm pretty sure it ain't that. So I think all you're really doing here is you're, you're putting it above board and you're taking away the temptation to break a rule that I think most people disagree with at this point anyway. Yeah, it's, I, I, I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I would, I'd be really interested in a, in a true, truly scientifically well-conducted poll on that. Because I, it surprises me that people would, in the average sense, say, you shouldn't pay a college... A college athlete, he gets a scholarship. The argument is what he gets a scholarship. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, and that, that's understandable. What's when one it of the arguments? From, but that's a very heated one. When it comes from people, you know, our age or maybe a little older, who are working to put their kids through college. Uh, put the rest of the demographics out there, sir. Uh, put the rest of the demographics out there. Sociology, RAs working to get to college, and what else? You know where it's coming from. There's a certain. There's a certain. Go for it. I'm missing you here. Okay, so there's there's. Especially for the big time sports, quote unquote. Oh, okay. Football. Okay. okay. Yep. Yep. Basketball. It's a fair point. No, that, that's a fair point. There is a uneven demographic when aligned with the rest of the country's population. Is that what you're going for here? Yeah, that's definitely what I'm going okay. for. Right. Yeah. No, and it's. That's, I don't that's, want to say it for you. <laughs> but I know. I know where you're big, going here. That's a big time. I do. A big time part of um, it. And, does it does, it's gonna, and it's going to continue to be a big time part of the conversation. And that's a does that does that part of it bother people that they're seeing that these people of color go to school and I'll, you can't see the air quotes, but for free. Right. 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 When you know, I, this is going to sound very typical. You know, we got to pay for Joey to go to school, but you know. Jawan right. is getting through right. school for free right. Right, because he's six foot ten and can jump. Well, guess what? That's a legitimate freaking talent. Right. Okay. Right. Supply and demand. Yeah, in that, in that context, and demand. right. In that, in that context, yeah, there's certainly going to be people who are adamantly against it, only or possibly, or you know, possibly only and certainly primarily because of that reason. I, but I still, I think that from a society standpoint, we've become a, enough of a bunch of bitches and complainers. That people will just complain about it anyway, Absolutely. because, because yeah. they didn't get the freaking opportunity, or because you know, for whatever reason, life didn't work out that way well, people, for them. People, which is people like to complain pathetic. about everything. Yeah, like the whole dynamic of sports has changed. Like even it professional has. sports, it has. Like those guys had two jobs, professional athletes back in the day, and, and they yeah. and they drank with the common people, and, and there weren't cell phones to take pictures with right. people. And now, yeah. and people still bitch at the game when you when you hear it. They're and they're like, these athletes get paid. So much money, but yeah, but they're also bringing they're, in a lot of money for your city. Right, exactly. You're here at the game, paying for the tickets. Like, right. there's a lot of things that go into it. And look what, yeah, look what they're doing with, with cell phones, and you know, just you're, you're never, you're never at a moment's peace. You can't even go out and have, you know, food or, or, or go to a movie, or you can't. You have to live your life almost in seclusion or by covered by the secret service, just to do whatever the heck it is that you want to do. That or, comes with the territory, though. The bottom line is this: there's a certain fraction of people in this world that are able to do things that others aren't. Right. And that thanks to the gene pool lottery, you get you get that. Right. I, I, and yeah. until and, until that becomes a common a common skill set, you, you deserve over. to be compensated differently. Yeah. Is, you gotta get over it. Yeah. They, don't, they don't set the, the market value. Right. <laughs> the rarer you are, the more you're gonna get paid. That's yeah. just what it is. I'm willing to guess that Trevor Lawrence can't fix a computer as well as he can you can't write an article as well as you can. The difference is 110,000 people are not showing up to watch you fix right, that exactly. game anymore. Yeah. And, and Dan Chuck can't throw a ball from the uh, opposite right. hash to the out. That, 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 that kid with a 4-0 pre-med student may very well play a more vital role in society than Jabril oh, Peppers. Sure. But, once again... People aren't buying season tickets to yep. watch him take my blood pressure. It's the way okay. it goes. It's the way it goes. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, we, and, we can... and if you take it to Carlos's this point, a lot of these players, and I'll, yeah, we can just say it, a lot of the black players and the white players too, but we all know what we're looking at here. They come from areas where they are told from the beginning, 
this is this your ticket. Only way out. This, right. Only that, way out. Right. You know, when I when I mentioned Jabril Peppers, he was just close to my mind. But there's a guy who, his father and brother were both murdered before he was 13 years old. Do you think anyone in Jabril Peppers' life told him, hit the books, study, and become a doctor? That's your way out of Jersey City? Right. Well, you crack no. rock, but you got it with you, your jump shot. You know, and he runs a 4-3 something or other, and Jim Harbaugh certainly didn't show up at Paramus Catholic to see that kid take his physics mentor. <laughs> okay? I, I don't... I don't I don't see why we got to pretend about these things. Yeah, no, know. no, it's the truth. It's, it's going to be a, a topic of conversation, and uh, you know, this. It, it, I, I don't think there's really much that can be said about this, but you know, uh, ended on this. Um, I, I kind of find it increasingly. I found it harder and harder to fathom how athlete, athletes continue to get the venom, and I'm not just talking about college athletes, but just professional athletes continue to get the venom of. I can't believe he makes this much money. Da, 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 da. Meanwhile, look, look at the money that actors and actresses make. You know what I mean? Like, well, and some of these people, are, I think, are geniuses. Like, you know what I mean? To be able to, to, to do that's a skill that you have. But, like, I mean, how come I'm not hearing, and I mean, maybe I'm just not seeing it or hearing it, but I just don't feel like it's there's a stigma on, like, anyone, you know, whoever you want to say, Tom Hanks, whoever, whoever the hell, Tina Fey, any, anyone you want to throw out there, Melissa McCarthy, how the hell is she making money? Like, you know what I mean? Like, all these millions of dollars that these people make for for being in a movie. Like, you know, I just... I've become accustomed to saying that, you know, if you have a problem with an athlete making that much money and you just you can't go and, and support it and watch it because of this, that, and the third, I said, well, go to the movies then. Go to the movies. Spend your money, you know, entertain yourself in a more suitable way. You know, I'm open. I, I don't think most people will... will I don't think it'll resonate with most people that, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a Tom Hanks movie. Right. He made fifty million for chasing Leonardo DiCaprio around for the summer. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he took nowhere near the risk on his body. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot that's gonna come out of this and uh, it should be fun to talk about as certain metrics and milestones are met. Uh but Jabronis, we're gonna sign off here. We uh, were live at Nippers, wanna thank Nippers for having us, wanna thank Rule and Truth for syndicating us, and you can also listen to us on iHeartRadio iTunes, and uh, Spotify. Talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.